Hello friends and welcome back to another video on study tonight. In this react series up until now we have covered a lot of things and I would highly recommend all of you to go back start from the episode 1 if you're just learning react js watch all the videos step by step and you will enjoy every video every single video because I've covered a lot of different things in each videos with code examples and I would also suggest you to please write code side by side from the first video start with you know basic react setup and then side by side as I move on with you know different concepts write the code as I write in the uh, video so that you get the best result and you understand everything so in this video I will be talking about states I have talked about states in the previous two videos as well but there are a few things that I wanted to talk about that uh, specifically I wanted to mention that there are a few things that you should avoid when you start using states. Obviously, there are different ways to manage state. Uh, as we move on in this React.js series, we'll learn about more of those concepts. But there are a few things that beginners face problems with. So I wanted to cover those things uh, and, you know, aware you that, okay, these things might not work the way you might uh, feel that, okay, this should work like this. But uh, chances are that you know, things work differently. So in this video, we'll talk about all those things and I will also show you, you know, why those things are not working and what is the workaround. So we have a blank component over here, the main app component, and we don't have anything over here created in this. So let's quickly, you know, write some code, create a state, and then we'll see what are the things that I'm talking about, what are the mistakes that you should be avoiding. So let's start by creating a state variable. So what we will do is we will create a state variable and let's create a simple counter variable because the idea here is to understand, uh, you know, how, what are the different things that you should avoid not creating some useful application. So I've created a counter variable. I've added a set counter function and the initial value is zero. So if I print it over here, we will get zero over here, right? So we're getting a counter uh, value over here. Now, obviously we would need a button to sort of, you know, update this value. Let's say plus. Yep. So on click of this plus button, we'll increment the value of the counter just to see, you know, how the state variable gets changed so you guys should know this this should be easy if you have seen the previous videos increment value so i've used the on click event handler and i've provided the increment value function to it because we are getting this error because the function right now doesn't exist so let me create the function now we have the function over here in this function what i'll do is i'll simply set the counter to counter plus one right so if i click on this plus this has started to update the value increment the value by one right now what we are here to learn is so uh you know as we click this button this increment value function gets uh, triggered and this set counter will increase the value by one and save it into the state but if you see or check the value of the counter state variable just after updating its value you will see that the value is not getting updated over here so if i click on plus the value that is displayed over here is one but we are still getting zero in the console so it's one behind three four but the value over here is five so initially the value is zero and when we click on this particular button it gets incremented to one but still over here, the value will still show zero because the value of the state variable gets updated whenever the component gets re-rendered. So until and unless the component is not re-rendered, we will still get the same value. So if you want to use this counter over here to do some calculation or maybe, you know, there is a, some other state variable that you feel that, okay, you have updated it and then you can use the updated value you will get into trouble or some error because the value you will get over here would still be the old value. So that is one thing that you should avoid. If you want to, you know, uh, perform some operation, you can most probably, you know, do this, uh, create, you know, a temp counter, uh, keep the same value in that as well. And then maybe, you know, start using that to do some other calculation. Maybe, you know, if you want to uh, do some other UI changes or do some other operation that you want to perform on the counter variable, the updated value of the counter. So you can do it like this. I would recommend you do it like this. So here now we are seeing the same value as we are seeing in the user interface as well. 
this is not the state variable but we have created a temporary variable to store the updated value of the state variable right so this was one thing another thing is that if you want to let's say uh, call this set counter to increment the value multiple times so let's say if you want to do this now let's see so ideally uh, when this uh, on this button is clicked increment value function is called the set counter should be called four times so if the value is zero initially it should be one two three four it should show us four right but if we are clicking on the button over here the value is still getting incremented by one why it is happening so what is happening over here is here the value that we get is zero plus one and because like i just mentioned that this counter variable will only get updated this counter state variable will only get updated when the component is re-rendered so still over here also you get the same value for the counter 0 plus 1 over here as well you get 0 plus 1 and over here as well you get 0 plus 1 there is no difference even if you call it four times you will still be incrementing the value by just one right that's how the state variables work right now if there is some use case where you actually want to do something like this how you can do that so in uh, react.js there is a concept of updater function so how you can do that if i do this counter update like this right so i've mentioned the counter uh, value state variable over here and i'm assigning it counter plus one so if i have this for all of them for let's say multiple calls that we have like this so let's have three calls now if i run it what will happen is i'm seeing three over here six so now this is getting called thrice but what's happening why it is getting called three times now so how react treats this is that react will take this as a internal function for the set counter and it will create a queue and add this to the queue right so this is added to the queue uh, where you know all the operations are uh, you know enqueued and one by one all of them are executed this will also be added to the queue and this will also be added to the queue so when all the you know set counter or upstate updates are done then all these three will be executed one by one so first one is executed counter gets updated then second one is executed counter gets updated then third one is executed and counter gets updated that's why we see plus three in the final value over sorry over here right and that's what we are seeing over here as well so this is how you should be updating your state variable if you want to you know do it multiple times using the setter function and you want to reflect the change done in the first call of the setter function and the result of that first uh, call of setter function should you know update the value and then the second one when it is called it gets the updated value so this is the second thing second mistake that you should be avoiding if you call the setter function for the state variable multiple times if you don't follow this updater function style you will not see the desired results the third thing is that you know that whenever a state variable is updated uh, the entire component gets re-rendered so if you have let's say this counter so this is a small component this small user interface just a counter and a button but if this component this particular app component has a lot of you know ui uh, components ui elements over here and a large user interface is getting created in this particular app component and there's a small state change that is happening now every time the state changes the complete user interface for that particular component will be updated so to avoid this what we should do is we should break our main component into smaller components so in this case if i want to you know for example let's assume that okay so right now we don't have much jsx elements in this particular component but let's assume that we have a lot of uh, you know uh, user components so it's ideal to have a counter component a separate component so let's quickly create a new file ignore these files i was trying out something so i've created multiple files over here so let me create a counter.js inside this i'll you know just create a functional component just like we do counter is equal to and i'll return this sorry i'll just simply return this So why is it showing error what is expected
Okay, sorry. Yeah, we have to have a parent. So we have to have a single root. That's also something that we have covered earlier as well. If we have multiple root elements, then React starts giving error. Now it's fine. So this is an open style. I can also have a div over here to enclose this. And then also it will work fine. Now the problem over here is that in this case, we have a counter state variable and the increment value function that we have to send it to this particular uh, component, but that's fine. You know, don't uh, worry about that. That can be sent through props. The idea over here is to understand that when we have a component uh, in which, you know, state is getting changed and that's a small piece of the entire user interface, we should never, uh, you know, bother the entire user interface to get re-rendered. Ideal way would be, you know, to pick that particular part and set it to another component so that only that component gets refreshed. So whenever this value will be changed, now only the counter uh, component will get refreshed. If I we have, you know, another, some other div elements over here, hello, react app, let's say some more stuff over here. This is a react JS tutorial. So these div elements won't be rendered again. Now to, you know, fix the problems, what we'll have to do is send in the counter variable as a prop. This is another use case. We are setting the, we will send the function as well. Right, so as props, you can send in both simple variables and functions too. So that's what we are doing over here. And we just have to send it to second component. When there are multiple components, it's better or it's advised to use use context hook, which we will learn in the upcoming videos to, you know, properly manage state. So don't worry about that. We're sending in the counter variable and the function to our second component because we don't want, you know, whenever small counter gets updated, the entire app component updates. So that's the third thing that you should focus on, right? That's the third mistake that you should avoid. Now in this case, just to quickly complete this code, let's go to the counter JS, expect a prop from here. We will have props.counter over here. And for this one, we'll have props.increment value. Counter is not defined. Oh, we're still getting counters. Okay, so this is for the component. We will have to import counter. from counter.js counter is undefined Yep, so now we have imported the counter and the error has gone. And uh, in this, we are sending props. The idea was just to showcase, in this case now, when this counter gets updated, because the change is being done inside of this particular component, so only that particular component would get rendered and others won't get rendered. Okay, so now nothing is happening. Oh, sorry. So we have to send in the increment value function, not the set counter function. Yeah, now it should work. If I refresh it, so it is working still. And only this counter component will get updated. Similarly, you know, there's cases when you might have a form in which there will be an input field, right? Now that input field might, you know, you will have some on change click event handler on that particular input field. And whenever you write, whenever the user is typing in something, the value will get changed multiple times, right? And if you are handling that with the state variable, then every single click of alphabet or every input, single input alphabet will change or trigger a component re-rendering. So those are the things that we should avoid. If you have to do it, then, you know, we should have a separate component so that just a piece of the entire user interface gets re-rendered and uh, we don't unnecessarily, you know, slow down the application re-rendering. So those are the three things that I wanted to share uh, with you guys about state. 
uh this is generally you know something that beginners face problem with and they generally get confused what's happening because they're not able to understand uh, all these things so yeah that's about it for this video if you like this video give it a thumbs up uh, if you are following this react js video share your reviews share your comments please in the comment section so that i get to know what i am doing right and what i am doing wrong what are the points that i need to improve on if you have not subscribed to the youtube channel please subscribe to our youtube channel press the bell icon so that you get notified whenever i post a new video stay tuned keep learning all the best